Cambridge International A level, May June 2024, paper 51. Question number one is the one that I'm going to discuss today. It is about planning experiment question. Now, let us dive into the question right away. Let us look at the first question. Figure 1.1 shows a small solid metal cylinder of mass M, length L, and diameter D. They have already explained the symbols here, so you have to be careful with the symbols that they use here. Cylinder is heated to a uniform temperature. The cylinder is then removed from the heat source and the cylinder is wrapped in an insulating material and the temperature of the room is TR. At time T, after the cylinder starts to cool, surface temperature of the cylinder is TC. It is suggested that TC is related to T by the relationship TC minus TR equals ZE exponent negative UAT over MC, where A is the total surface area of the cylinder. Now you have to be extra careful with A. Most of the time from the previous past questions that I've seen, normally A represents the surface area of cylinder. But in this case, in this past year paper, A represents the total surface area of the cylinder. So you have to use a little bit of math here in finding, in calculating the total surface area of the cylinder, which I'm going to show you later. C is the specific heat capacity of the metal, and U and Z are the constants. So you have to plan a laboratory experiment to test the relationship between TC and T. What is TC again? TC is the surface temperature of the cylinder. And T is the time taken for the cylinder to cool. Now, draw a diagram showing the arrangement of the experiment. And you have to use, uh, you have to explain how the results could be used to determine the values of U and Z. So use the results, you need to use the value of the gradient, but of course you are just a planner, so you need to link to gradient and Y-intercept on how to find U and Z. That's what they ask. In your plan, you should include first the procedure to be followed. What are the methods that you use? Second, the measurements. What are the measurements that I need to take? Third, the control, uh, control of the variables. Those are the variables. But during the experiment, you want to make sure that those variables are to be kept constant. How do you do that? And analysis of the data, as well as any safety precautions to be taken. Now, let us look at... Um, my answer. But first of all, before I really plan, let me tell you a little bit of how I plan my experiment. Before I really come up with any of the procedure, any of the analysis, etc., I will look at the question first. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to plan? I'm supposed to plan to test the relationship of T, C, and T. So one will be independent variable, the other one will be dependent variable. Uh, so I will draft my independent variable and dependent variable first. And after that, I will draft all my variables to be kept constant so that I can talk about that in additional details plus safety precautions. So look at the, if you want to come up with the uh, variables to be kept constant, you have to look at the relationship. Aside from independent and dependent variables, all those variables can be used as control variables during the experiment. But you have to make sure that you have a method to keep them constant during the experiment. Then only you stick that in your control variables. Now, let us look at my independent variable. My independent variable is T the time. And the dependent variable will be the surface temperature of the cylinder, metal cylinder. And the variables to be kept constant is my mass of the metal cylinder and specific heat capacity of my metal cylinder and the total surface area, I see, total surface area of the cylinder. 
Okay, and then look at my figure. I draw two figure here. First one is to let the examiner know how do I heat up the metal cylinder. And of course, I need to have a way in determining the specific heat capacity of the metal cylinder first, because I want to keep that as constant. And after that, okay, once the metal cylinder is being heated up to a certain temperature, you take that heater up from it and you have to wrap the metal cylinder with the felt jacket and I place two thermometers beside the surface metal cylinders, uh, be beside the metal cylinder, right? Okay, let me explain my methods. First, I make sure that, because I want to keep the variables to be constant, I use electronic balance to measure the mass of my metal cylinder. Second, the L, which is the length of the metal cylinder. I use a meter rule to measure it. D, which is a diameter of the measuring, so, uh, which is a diameter of the metal cylinder. I use micrometer screw gauge to measure it. Now, the room temperature, I use the thermometer, just a normal thermometer to measure it. I place thermometer at different position, right, to measure the room temperature. And then I add all the, I find the average room temperature. And heater is inserted in a hole drill, pre-drill first at the middle of the cylinder because I want to make sure that the distribution of the heat around the cylinder to be uniform. And the cylinder is heated out for 15 minutes. Oh, it's just the time I suggested. You can heat it out for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It is all up to you. And cylinder, after 15 minutes, the cylinder is taken up and I wrap it with felt jacket. Felt jacket is one of the insulating material. And then I inserted two thermometers placed at the two sides, close to the surface of the metal cylinder. So that's my method. So after the method, you need to write analysis. Normally, we write three points for analysis because three marks will be given for analysis. So the first analysis, let me write it down. First analysis, I say that um, I work it out on my equation first. Let me show you here first before I tell you about the analysis that I'm going to write. So this is uh, TC minus TR is equal to Z exponent negative UAT over MC. So you know what I do is that I learn both sides because this is exponent. I want to get rid of that exponential. So ln Tc minus Tr is equal to ln Z. Ln exponent, you leave it with nothing. So I'll just copy everything up here. Negative Ua over Mc times T. I am plotting a graph of ln Tc minus Tr. See, easier for me ln Tc minus Tr against T. Do you see that? So negative Ua over Mc will be my gradient of the graph, and ln Z would be my y-intercept. Now I'm going to write it down. <coughs> A graph of ln Tc minus Tr against T is plotted. Second, this is a straight line graph because I can make it compare with straight line equation y equals mx plus c, remember? So I would say that if a straight line graph with a y intercept ln z is obtained relationship is valid that's it and the third mark will be given when you tell the examiner how do you find your z and your u because at the end of the time the purpose of conducting this experiment is to find the value of the constant so i know that y intercept intercept is equal to ln z that is y to find the value of z is equal to e exponent y intercept that's it 
And I also know that negative UA over MC is equal to gradient. Now, U make U as a subject is equal to negative gradient multiplies by MC over A. That's it. Now, the hardest part of the question is the last part, which is additional details as well as the safety precautions. So let us talk about that, right? So I'm going to put here details and safety precautions. First of all, my detail is that, do you remember that the metal cylinder needed to be heated up first, right? And then you need to remove it from the heat and then you need to wrap it with the uh, insulating material. So when you remove it from the heat, so how are you going to hold the hot metal cylinder because definitely we, when you hold it with the bare hand, you're going to burn your hand. So the first safety precaution you need to talk about wearing the rubber gloves. <laughs> Rubber gloves is used to take, uh, to grab, okay, or to hold metal cylinder. Okay, first one. Second, you maybe want to say, um, okay, how are we supposed to find the uh, specific heat capacity? And how am I going to keep that specific heat capacity constant, right? So from figure one, because this is dependent on depending on figure one. Okay, the power heater okay, comes with uh, uh, power heater use. Um Power heater use is of known power rating. And okay, from equation E equals MC delta T. Okay, you have to explain every symbol that you use where E equals to heat. C, uh, C I do not have to explain because they have already explained. Um, M, I do not have to explain. Delta T is the change in temperature of cylinder. So I say that, okay, um, E, I replace with power times time is equal to MC delta T. So C is equal to PT over M times the change in temperature. So if you want to explain further, you can say change in temperature is the initial, uh, yeah, sorry, final temperature of the cylinder temperature of cylinder minus <laughs> initial temperature of cylinder. And T, remember I told you about 15 minutes, 15, you just times 60. So T, you got a value here, 15 times 60, that gives you 900 seconds. Okay. And P is a power rating, right? The power stated on the power heater, right? M is the mass of the cylinder. That's all. And the third one, you might want to say that um, uh, measuring, measurement. D of a cylinder is repeated along cylinder. You know why? Because sometimes the cylinder is not seriously, it is not exactly 100% smooth. So you just want to make sure that your result is more accurate by doing so, right? And average, yeah, and average. Remember there? And for, remember, um, okay, remember the um, A. A is the surface area of the hole, 
measuring cylinder, uh, the whole metal cylinder, remember? So how do I find A? A of cylinder is the total area, right? Um, okay, so which is equal to, uh, I better write it in more detailed manner, two times surface area, Okay, of uh, two times surface area of a uh, circle or the surface, okay, plus um, length, okay, area. Or oh, I just draw that, that out, okay. Or oh, I just write down, because this is measuring cylinder, I just show you first, this is a measuring cylinder. Uh, this is not measuring cylinders. I keep on talking about measuring cylinder, that's funny, right? So this is metal cylinder. So, okay, the surface of the circle is here, and then you need to add, because this is a total surface of the metal cylinder, so, and then add with this one to get you A. So A is equal to pi, d squared over 4. How do I get here? Because this r, this is circle, so it's a pi r squared. Circle is pi r squared. And then you know that r is equal to d over 2. When you sub into the equation, you get d over 2, but you square it, you get pi d squared over 4. So I have two circle to complete the metal cylinder, so pi d squared over 4 plus pi d, pi d, O times with the length. Uh, so simplified it, you have 2 pi d squared over 4 or 1 over 2 plus pi dl. Yeah. And then number 5, you might want to say that because the thickness of the felt jacket must be uniform around the metal cylinder. So I say that the thickness of a felt jacket or insulating material yeah, I want to keep it constant as well. Is measured, measured using vernier caliper. Sorry, vernier caliper. And then number six, um, I place because TC is the surface surface temperature of the metal cylinder. Remember, right? So two thermometers meters are placed close to surfaces of a metal cylinder um, then TC can be determined determined by averaging the two readings of thermometer, thermometers, right? And then number seven, we might want to use a circuit for the heater, right? Because safety precaution plus additional details, maximum mark given is only six marks. So therefore I write six point, but actually you can gain more information for the details and um, safety precaution from the circuit that I drew here. So I use real stat to control the amount of current. I use heater, right? The circuit for the heater because heater cannot work by itself. It needs to be connected to power supply unit. That will also give you that one more here. Right, so that's the end of the May, June 2024, paper 51. Right, question number one. I hope you gain benefit from that. But if you have any mm, doubts or any problems that you face in paper five, question number one, right, please do comment below. And if you need the full PDF solution for this paper, what you need to do, just comment below, right? So I'll see you again in my next video. Thank you very much for watching and bye.